Hi, this video is a continuation for the Power Electronics Lectures and today we are going to cover waveforms computations. Last time we have discussed why RMS and average values are very important, especially for power electronics where we have different waveforms, shapes, and we need to know the RMS and average values for selection and also for uh, a power dissipation calculation. Today we are going to continue, but we have uh, to know how we compute these uh, values and also additional values. So, as we finished last time, we finished with this slide that talks about converter. We have power input, we have power output to calculate the efficiency, and we need really average values and RMS values. And today we are going to cover some examples about how we compute these things and also how we uh, uh, compute the power average for any other signals generally might be found in other circuits as well. So the waveform computation, according to my view, uh, uh, may be classified importantly uh, in power electronics for two groups, uh, waveform power computation and also waveform quality computation. When I say power computation, which is the topic for this lecture, we mean the average values and RMS values that we will use for power computations. But for the quality computation, where we have signals and we want just to know uh, the, the, um, maybe the harmony component in it, okay? So we will use different computations and also different equations to describe it. And one example of that is the total harmonic distortion, THD. This one, maybe if you, if you compute that, you will sense how much harmonic is in your signal compared with your fundamentals. But in this lecture and maybe in this module, uh, essentially, we will be covering the power computation and um, we will know how to uh, compute the average values and also RMS values beside how we use LT spice to do this for us. And maybe the first thing we are going to cover is the instantaneous power. And from the name, instantaneous, it's related to time, okay? And this instantaneous power is computed by knowing the voltage across a device or component and the current going through that component um, uh, as instantaneous values. So the instantaneous power as a function of time equals the instantaneous voltage times the instantaneous current and also it's measured by uh, by what okay so it's a time varying quantity and sometimes we use this uh, instantaneous power to calculate the average power or to calculate the energy consumed or delivered uh, uh, by by a device and the energy is the integral of the instantaneous power not over one period uh, specifically, no, you can you can integrate it over uh, unlimited time, okay, or specific uh, constraint times period according to uh, your uh, question. And the energy is the integration from that time t1 to that time t2, might be a period or a more than a period, and uh, it's the integration of the instantaneous power and that's measured by Joule. So by knowing the instantaneous power, I can really know the energy. And if that integration actually uh, uh, was over one period of time for a periodic signal, so we are really defining something called the average power. So the average power is related to periodic signals. Uh, and if we just uh, multiply the voltage and current instantaneous values, we will get the instant instantaneous power. And if we average that one or integrate that one over one period, we will get something called average power. And this is the equation for this. So the average power, and I just uh, uh, identify it by large or capital letter here. The instantaneous power is small letter here. So the average power is the integration from zero to T the instantaneous power uh, divided by the period, and that's also measured by what? So T is the period, and I think you know the period, which is the reciprocal of the frequency. And remember, the energy 
it it might be over period okay or over different times here and it's not related to periodic signals always it can be for periodic signals or different signals and if we now look at the uh, energy here is the integration from t1 to t2 uh, the instantaneous power and that one is from 0 to t and we have a division here which is not exist here so if we integrate the instantaneous power from 0 to t okay so i think we can really match the energy and average power by this equation so the average power it can be the energy okay the integration from 0 to t but divided by what by the period and that's the way that we can really uh, get the energy out of the average power or the average power out of the energy so now we cover the instantaneous power the energy and average power and as we mentioned um, at the start of this lecture we are going to cover the rms value and how we compute it and maybe i mentioned before that we really uh, uh, use the RMS value for selection and power dissipation calculation and it's really equal something called effective value that dissipates the same energy or the same power or the same heat so what is the RMS value and it has another name which is called effective value so it's called here root mean square root of the mean of the squared signal and that x of t can be any a signal for the voltage or for the current so to get the RMS value for any signal I have first to square it okay and then get the mean what's the mean the mean is the average okay so I run an integration from 0 to T okay and divided by T and that will be defining the mean for me and then I get the root out of this result and this is the RMS so this is the equation that really describes the RMS value, which is the square root of the mean value of the square signal. So I have to square the signal first and then get the mean value. The mean value is 1 over t or the average value for any signal. 1 over t integration from 0 to t x square of t. So the origin is x of t, but because it's RMS, so I have to square it and this is the mean of the squared okay and then i get the root value so if you forgot the uh, rule or the equation for root mean square square it get the average and i uh, put it under the um, uh, square root okay so square the signal calculate the average of the squared signal and then calculate the root of the result and this is the way that we calculate RMS for different waveforms. But now if I have a signal that is composed from different signals or it's, it can be considered as summation of different signals or waveforms, so how I can get the uh, RMS value for that? If the signal is a periodic signal and it's composed of different or it can be considered as summation of different periodic signals and this signals can i can get the rms value for each individually i really can get the rms value for the main signal by getting the rms value for each and putting the rms value under the root square after squaring them so if i have a signal v of t that's considered as summation of v1 of t and v of v2 of t okay maybe this is a dc value and this is a sine wave okay so i can really get the rms value for the first one and square it here and get the RMS value for the second one and square it and then running the uh, square root here I will get the RMS value for what for the main signal so I don't need actually to every time if I have a new signal to do or run the RMS value from the uh, from the original uh, equation I can really decompose it to different signals that I know the VRMS for them and then I can run this um, uh, this rule here okay if I have now if this one is a sine wave and this one is a different sine wave for example or triangle wave okay but I have this time a DC value or DC component added to that one so how the VRMS will be calculated 
exactly the same. We will get the VRMS value of this one and square it. And we will get the VRMS for the second one and we will square it. And also we will get the RMS for the DC component, which is the same as DC value and square it and run also the square root for that. So look at this, it's exactly the same. Okay, even with the DC value or no. Why? Again, we have an example. This is now something like sawtooth signal, but that sawtooth has an offset. Okay, that offset is a DC value. So it's like V1 of T, which is sawtooth uh, signal, plus a DC value. Okay, and that can be decomposed to two signals, like this one, which is sawtooth. But that sawtooth is, is considered as a DC signal, it's not AC, okay, because all the values are above the zero, and also a DC signal here, okay, or DC offset. So I know that can be decomposed to this and this, but I know the RMS value for this one, for example, I have done it before, and I know the RMS value for this one, instead of doing RMS calculation for this one from the origin, okay, I really can just get the VDC square here and RMS value square here and some 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 them and put it under the root and I will get the v, VRMS for this one and this is very beneficial rule because it it uh, it really shortcut uh, many steps when I know the decomposed signals VRMS values. So I will stop the video now and I will go through some examples in the coming video just to uh, introduce to you how we run the RMS calculation and also values for some common signals in power electronics. And the purpose for that is to show you how we do that and also to memorize and maybe build a table of the signals and also average and RMS values to be used later for something like this, decomposing, or to use it later for your calculation instead of doing the calculation every time you just go to that table and also uh, uh, just go get the VRMS and the average value to compute your power dissipation for any component. So next video for some examples. Thank you.